And either swing it around or tip, go inside your shirt. There's and take it out by the leg, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How about that, this one? This one's going to rub now. Now, the other one was rubbing because it was sitting literally on it. Where, and where is the proper uh, line where we're drawing no more chains? Like How many? Like, you're up to two now. Like, how far, you think, are you, like, how I, far does this go? Where, have I OC? OC? At what point do I go, okay, Scott, the chain thing, it's, it's, it's too what much. What happened to him? He OC'd. He, OC'd. he, over, he over chain. Oh, there was a movie, movie? but he over gold. Yeah, over gold. Over G. He was all G. And it was like, Mr. T. They're like, what happened to him? He OG'd. Over gold. <laughs> over gold. We'll be right back. Well, hey, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake, wake up. I'm, I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We've got a morning scripture. You're going to pray over your day. And uh, down there, if you're a new subscriber, put down in there where you're from. Yeah. And uh, we'd like, we read those off on Wednesday. And we're really building up to something where w one episode, every every now and then, we, you, we just want you to go crazy and share it. Like, bologna sandwich. And when we say the phrase bologna sandwich in some other episode, not this one, we want everyone who watches it to share that day. Share it. And just see, we just want to see what will happen. Just see what it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not today, bologna sandwich, no. but another day. And don't forget about our prayer line. Um, yep. Also, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 3. Arizona if you care for anything, you can call in. They'll put the number down there right now. Yeah, 480-937-2330. And so, uh, what an epic, amazing teaching. Uh, we got a great scripture for your day, by the way. And then we're going to pray over your day at the end. So we're actually talking about the teaching, not from this last Sunday, but the Sunday before. Yeah. And um, we're going to go to the scripture, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 5. I never would have guessed that. Okay. Good. And uh, the idea was is that there's this the Jesus coming into Jerusalem, he came in on a lowly donkey and it was right. uh, it was a picture of the king coming into his afflicted city right. to establish his throne and to do what he does, right? Jesus changes everything when he comes in and becomes the king of that place. And in the same way in your life, there are places where Jesus needs to have access to the throne. And we bring him into that city by declaring the word of God into that Atmosphere. And you're worthy. And I, Jason, I, it's funny. I have never saw it that way. That the lowly donkey, one of, in a sense, was a picture of, of me. <laughs> I well, never did. I we, never saw myself have you as noticed, a donkey. Uh, I've, I've really avoided saying that because see, Saturday night when I preached it, I said I, I, I actually just brought it out. I was like, and you're the lowly donkey. Like, deal with it. You're the donkey. Yeah. And and my wife said afterwards, she goes, I don't want to be the donkey. <laughs> So, so on Sunday, I never like. I, I just said, "Now the donkey is kind of a, pi a picture of us." You know, right, I didn't. Right, 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 but I right. never like straight out said, "You're the donkey." You know, what's funny is I like being the donkey. I'm the donkey. I'm not. I have no problem I'm, with it because you know the donkey is. He's a little ornery sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. Right. But the fact that I can carry Jesus Christ wherever I go is it's, a great picture. Well, because people that come to me sometimes are like, "You have no business being a pastor." And I'm like, "But I'm the donkey." Right. And I want everyone else. <laughs> and the also, donkey carries the king, so I'm not. And I, I agree with you, but I'm the donkey. As he chooses donkeys. As we're talking about a biblical donkey, I'm going to make a reference here. It's going to be fine. Jason's going to be okay. No, with you're it. not going to do no, it. No, no, no. I'm not doing what you're thinking you're doing. I just want people to comment down there how much restraint I have. <laughs> In the, it's a donkey. In so many jokes that are available to me right now, it's in today's society, it's it is unacceptable to call him anything me. but a donkey. That's all I call him is a donkey. What are you guys talking about? Donkeys have layers. <laughs> Onions have layers. have layers. Parfaits have layers. Okay, Exodus you know chapter that? twenty-three and verse five. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, okay. Okay, so so just kind of breaking this apart, donkey's person. Yeah. Of the one who donkey of the one who hates you. So in other words, someone who, uh, uh, when, before you knew Christ, you belonged to the world and okay. to the enemy. Right. So I was the donkey of the enemy. Right. He was working me. So when you see a non-believer, right, the, the donkey who belongs to the enemy. Sure. Right. He says this. Um, Lying under its burden. That's what we're going to see a lot. Yeah. We're going to see people of this world lying under... See, in other everywhere. words, it collapsed under the burden. And the, You know donkeys can't carry a lot of weight. They can't. No. I didn't know that. I thought they carried a lot of weight. Yeah, you think about a, a king coming into a city. He rides a white steed. Sure. A, a battle horse. Right. But not our Jesus. He comes in because yeah. he wins with peace. Right. And so he comes in on a lowly donkey, but a donkey can only carry about a maximum of 400 pounds and not Ooh. very far. Didn't know that. Yeah. So, uh, so here's a donkey who's collapsed under its burden. Right. Okay, and you would refrain. It says, if you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, and you would refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. If I would refrain, I would. Help In other him? words, he's saying he's saying you don't want to help, right? Because that that's the donkey of someone who hates you, right? 
but you help anyways. And that's what we're called to do. That's what my whole series has been about, Mr. Rogers, was just all about my job as I go off. I've been freed from my burden. My job is not to put burden on people, mm -hmm. but my job is to take burden off. So that, that waitress that is just frustrated but doing a horrible job for you, mm -hmm. you know what she doesn't need? She doesn't need you to call the manager. She doesn't need you to tell her what she needs to do right and what's wrong with her. What she needs is for you and I to be God's love in action on earth and encourage her, build her up, and take the load off of her. Yeah, she, she might, don't need more load. She might be just collapsing under the weight. And, and, you don't know what's and, going on behind the scenes. Maybe at home. Maybe she's got a, a kid that's sick, or maybe she, her, her spouse took off. You don't know her burden. Yeah, it, and it almost doesn't matter what her past burden. has been. Like, or to excuse it, what we need to recognize is, like it says in Romans chapter 8, who will accuse the one that God has chosen. And, and so who has God chosen? He's chosen all of us. Because it is God who justifies. So it's not that we're justifying bad behavior because they not. have a bad past. We're just simply saying God loves that person and loved him, loves that laid that waitress so much that he sent his only son to die for her. Right. And you're carrying that love in you, right. Christ in you. The deepest part of you is wanting to help her with that burden. And it's, it's an epic Mr. Rogers life when you go forth and it's all about relieving people of burden. Yeah. That person at the office is just mean and nasty and hurtful and everything they do, you can talk bad about and you can be angry with and you can shoot them dirty looks. Yeah. And all you're doing is you're adding burden on them. Yeah, you're making it or worse. Or I can One more person that doesn't them. like them. I can encourage them. Say, you're, you know what's funny is when you say stuff like that that doesn't is out of the box, you're like, man, I don't know what it is about you, but you just come into a room and you just brighten it up. Yeah. Right? Suddenly they and they're, they're, they're like, like what? And they're, really? they're, in their mind, they're no like, no one's ever said that to me before. What are you talking about? How, how does that even? Yeah. You can, and I'm going to say this, and Jason's going to, doesn't even, you can Hank Myers it. Oh, Hank Myers. Okay, so we were, Great we were in the old building. Great he was man. one of the founders, helpers, whatever, pillars of Living Word Bible Church. Oh. And I don't know, I think, Jason, you were there. We had this flower pot. It was the size of this table. And I don't like Ceramic. I don't, it, it was just, it was. Full of dirt. Full of dirt. So we had three of us. And we were trying to lift it up on a ledge to make it look good. Yeah. And, and all three of us were like, and Hank Myers, you have to know, he's about six foot ten, probably 380 pounds. Just, just a giant, just a of giant a man. guy. And all of a sudden he pulled up and he had one of the, the first little smart cars. It was so cute to see him get out. You remember him getting out of that? Like, he took up the car. You looked in and it was just him. When he got out, the car went. <laughs> so he gets out and he's like, hey, you all need some help with that? And we we're like, yeah. And so we thought he would just. And he goes, he came over and he's like, all right, you guys, watch what he got everybody. He moved everybody out. the way. And he went like this. He he grabbed it and he went, boom, and he put it up there. And I went, okay. Nobody carries a burden like Hank. Hank came in. He didn't give us. He didn't say, hey guys, you need to do this and that. He he didn't sit on it. Yeah. He relieved us of the burden. Yeah. You and I have that Jesus Christ in us, mm -hmm. so we can do supernatural. We mm -hmm. can come into a situation and go, Hank Myers it and go. Boom! Well, and this is really what I wanted to bring up, is that when, when we allow burdens to weigh us down, which is not God's plan for your no. life, right? Well, but pastor, I care. I know, I know you care. I know you, and so you carry that because you care. But Jesus said to cast your cares on me, right? So we have to follow what he says. Like, I get it that you care, but now you have to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't change the future by caring. You can only really change the future by declaring. So we declare oh, wow. God's word by faith, and then what, now we can see the future change. Otherwise, we're just victims as we care and wallow in our own guilt because nothing can ever change, and this is so bad, and my life is so bad. It's not helping anybody. So instead, you're going to declare that thing to the word of God and allow the word to, to carry that burden. And Because when you see people weighed down and collapsed under the weight of their life, and you already have burden, you can't help them. Mm. You can't help. What are you going to do? You're going to pick up their weight when you can't even carry your own weight? So this is why Jesus wants to free you. He wants to free you so that he can reach that next lost person. Because probably somebody reached out to you when you were lost. Yep. Because they had learned this principle to not carry a weight so they could identify your weight and come to you and help you with that. It's a powerful lesson. I, it, it's, it's epic. So let's, let, let's do that. Let's mm. be the ones that relieve the burden in life. So go forth today and everything, everywhere you go, look at ways that you can make people's lives easier mm -hmm. rather than harder. How I can encourage and build up rather than push down mm -hmm. and keep down. It's, it's an attitude and you find that at the end of the day, I know this, mm -hmm. that at the end of the day, man, I felt good. 
Yeah. I really do. I felt I felt great because it was a day of doing what I was called to do. By Jesus says, "Go forth and show the world love." Mm -hmm. That's our calling. Yeah. You want to pray over their day? Yes, Father God, I thank you and praise you, Lord, that you you help us with this. That Lord, anything you've asked us to do, you give us the strength to do. And so we draw on your strength to do the supernatural things that you're asking of us. So it's just a supernatural thing, Father God, for us to give up our burdens and let you do those things. And it is also a supernatural thing for us, Lord, to reach out to people who hate us, uh, to reach out to people who are under burden and they've been mean to us. But, Lord, we count on your supernatural love to give us the strength to do these things, Father God, that you fill us up with your love. You give us your value. When other people reject us, Lord, we just turn to you and realize, well, you chose us, and that's enough for us, that that's the value that we needed. I thank you and praise you, Lord, that today we walk through our day and help others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Watch this clip. And what God is maybe having us ponder today is can we be a second chance people? Not because people deserve it, but because of who's in us. Because our savior is a second chance person. Not because they have it coming to them, they probably have something different coming to them. But because our Jesus taught us a better way. And out of that we find stronger relationships. In John chapter 16, Jesus said to the Lord, Father, I've not lost one that you've given me. What was Jesus saying? He was saying the same people I'm starting with are the same people I'm going to finish with. God wants this for you in your life. And maybe that hasn't been your past, but you know what? He can bring divine relationships into your life now. He could bring that great friend into your life now. He could bring that spouse you've been praying for. He brings the right person into your life. But here's what you need to know. They won't always be perfect. They're not always going to hit the bar. They're not always going to do everything right. And so the key to that long relationship is going to be saying, that's a divine relationship. God brought you into my life. Sure, you had a mess. You made a mistake. You betrayed me. You lied about me. You said wrong things about me. You didn't even like me. You persecuted me. But I'm going to be a person who gives second chances. I'm going to draw my strength from the Lord Jesus Christ to bring forgiveness into this relationship. Because isn't that what we want? Don't we want to have friends that when I open myself up and show you what I'm really like, what I really think, that you won't flee from me, that you won't leave me, that you won't dislike me. Don't you want people who will love you and accept you exactly as you are? And so many times we don't open ourselves up because we're afraid people won't like what they see. But when you find somebody that you can open yourself up, they see all of you and they love you exactly as you are, change nothing about yourself, but I accept you and I care about you. Isn't that the kind of person we want that will stand with us when we fall, when we make a mistake, when we put our foot in our mouths and say something dumb, that they'll pick us up and lift us up? What I'm saying is if that's what we want, then that's who we become. Become that person to someone else and you'll reap a harvest. Give the Lord some praise. Like, share, subscribe, wherever you are out there. Uh, make it out there. Be in church this weekend, right? Yeah, that's right. And don't forget about our epic marriage conference. Marriage conference coming up February 26th. to one night only event. You're going to take your marriage up a level. Learn biblical principles from Pastor Scott and I and our wives. Also some funny experiences and stories. There's going to be games. You're going to meet a lot of great people. And the event is how much money? It's a lot. So start if you start saving now, we figured if you put zero away today, you put zero away each and every day, then you'll be able to pay the zero. Okay, but you need to earn interest on your zero, don't you? Yeah, so you get a good uh, IRA. Uh, that's what I do with my zero. It does cost you your time, yes. but it's going to be an investment of your time. You're not going to spend your time there. You're going to invest it. There's a lot of places you can spend your time on that Wednesday night, right? but you can invest in There's your marriage. There's one place that you can invest. Mm -hmm.